In this video of how about 50 houses in 52 weeks at just 22 years old, I want to share with you uh, one very important way that I uh, thought and, and did and created to make this happen. And that is I got very creative. What do I mean by that? Well, I'll give you a, just a few examples. So for example, if you've seen the last video I did, I talked about owner financing, uh, very important part of how this worked. Training that I started out wholesaling, uh, then I got help, got a field agent on steroids and uh, started doing these lease option or excuse me, these owner financing deals. And so uh, owner financing was a huge way of building my portfolio in this uh, period. It still is today, actually. And so uh, to get creative on that, because I've seen uh, people sometimes who get this thought of owner financing and think, you know, oh, the house has to be free and clear or it needs a debt and I'll just take over that amount or whatever it may be. Uh, and there is all sorts of creative ways to do owner financing. So what I did is a, a couple of examples here is for example, one, there was a lady who owned the house free and clear was going to lose it on taxes. It at the time was probably worth 80 to a hundred thousand, probably in the eighties actually. Um, and this, uh, was a deal that, she owed taxes, she owed water lien, she just was not in a good spot. So I realized later that she was going to lose it if I didn't buy it. So what I did, she needed $60,000. And so rather than uh, argue with her on price, which I attempted to do and she would not budge, uh, was I just offered to pay her that over time. So she agreed to accept $1,500 down. So I paid closing in Indiana. So there was no transfer tax or nothing. Closing was around a thousand bucks, give or take. So I paid closing and gave her 1,500 bucks. And then, uh, so about 2,500 bucks, give or take. And then I agreed to start paying her $300 a month. So $300 a month, but the way the law and the agreement and everything was set up, the and she was very clearly understood this the three hundred dollars a month first paid off the taxes and then the water lien and then after and only after those were made whole did she start receiving a check so a house that was hers she ended up getting zero dollars on she ended up getting fifteen hundred dollars now and three hundred dollars a month for many years thereafter and so it was a win 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 and so that is how I structured a deal like that, that I, it needed a little bit of work. So you actually, uh, we'll show you in the next video, I'll uh, get the tenants to do the work, uh, doing lease options, and I'll get into some more detail about that. But uh, for the sake of this video, the point is I bought the house with owner financing, $1,500 down, paid her a great price, way above what a wholesale value could have been but in the end made it a win because she was willing to give us time. So that's one example of our financing. Another example uh, that I'll give today was I went to a seller's house. The seller, uh, it was about a 70, maybe $80,000 house. The seller was asking $35,000, if my memory serves me correctly. I asked what's the lease they would take. Now, I knew I didn't have the money lined up and I hated to wholesale this deal and I wasn't sure, frankly, if I could because of the work it needed, if there was enough room. So I, uh, it was a cash only deal. So I asked them after I negotiated the price, what's the least you can take? And they stated a number. I said, is that the best you can do? They stated another number. And so they come down to $31,000. And I said, uh, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, I can get to the 31. Actually, they went down lower than that to 20 something. And I brought them back up. I said, I can get to 31 buying it. If you'll give me a little bit of time to pay you off in full. I don't need a lot of time. In this case, it was pretty well a wholesale price. So I, I technically could have been a cash deal, but I didn't have the private money lined up for it. And that scared me. So uh, they said, well, how long do you need? I said, what's the longest you can give me? Went back and forth. They agreed to nine months. Nine months, 
no payments, no nothing, just nine months, and then I pay them off. I said, okay, great. So we can make that work, and I'll pay the closing. And they said, well, how much will you put down? And I said, well, usually in a case like this, nothing. And they responded, well, I've got to have something. And I said, well, what are you thinking? And they said, uh, you're paying closing? I said, yes. They said, uh, give us $1,000 at closing, and that will be fine. Then you can just pay us the rest in nine months. So I wrote up the purchase agreement just like that. And I turned the seller essentially into my private lender. Now, I paid a couple grand more for the property than I otherwise would have, but the seller was willing. I was only out the $1,000 in that scenario plus closing. And so uh, it was a great way to take ownership of the property and have time to do whatever I needed to with it, either work on it and flip it or wholesale flip it. And so uh, that was another strategy that I used. Now, I will give you an, one more example today uh, and that is a seller come to me. It was actually uh, my brother <clears throat> who worked with, and they found him online. And it was on Christmas Eve of all times, Christmas Eve, 2015. And they reached out to him and said, uh, we need to sell our house fast. So, I was uh, at the family's for Christmas, <laughs> and so I was definitely a dedicated soul, okay? <clears throat> Probably could have waited to get this deal for a couple of days, but I wasn't taking no chances. And so uh, I was 20, uh, 22 and hungry. Well, I guess it was late in the year, so I just turned 23, and uh, I was 23 by then and hungry. So I uh, jumped in the car, drove over to the seller's house. And that's before I was doing them virtually. And looked at it. The seller was behind on payments by just over $7,000. And uh, was going to lose the house. The house needed a little bit of work. Needed Had some uh, floor. They had let the sink overflow. So it had some surface water damage on the laminate flooring. They wiped it up. But it damaged the floor. Few random things it needed, right? The carpets wasn't great. So it wasn't in, a, in bad shape by any shot. It was a nice home in, in uh, Newburgh, Indiana. But it was definitely needed a little bit of, of upkeep. The pool liner needed some work, whatever. So they owed around 130 on it. And they're about to lose it. So I agreed to do it. Buy the house with technically nothing down, but to bring their mortgage current. I'll show you next uh, video how I did that at the time with uh, the lease option. But for now, for the sake of this video, uh, I'll explain what I did. So I bought the house, agreed to bring the mortgage current, $7,800. And if you say, I don't have $7,800, not to worry. <laughs> On the next video, you will see uh, how I was able to acquire that money to bring it current. Uh, but uh, it, neither here nor there. For this video, $7,800, $130,000, buy the house, agree to cover their payment of approximately $800. And uh, so I'm in a house that's worth $200,000. Wasn't, it was borderline again for a wholesale deal. If I would have wholesaled it, I got 10 or 20. I'm going to show you how I made over $100,000 on this house. One thirty purchase price, value of two hundred. dollars and uh, buying it on owner financing. So that is three strategies. The first example was a free and clear house she was about to lose. We paid her over time, which is very commonly done in owner financing. Way two, uh, way below value, needing cheap cash fast, was able to get some time. And way three, uh, there was a debt it was gonna lose it to foreclosure, and again, was able to get some time. So that is three of the creative ways uh, that I used in owner financing to get these deals. Now, let me share one more thing with you before I end this video for you today. And that is, I want to mention, not only was I creative in the deal structuring, but I was creative in finding sellers. You notice the one seller, the last one I referenced on Christmas Eve came through my brother. He was a realtor. They reached out to him. And uh, another one, that came had came off of uh, a bandit sign and uh, another one 
if I remember correctly, came off of an online ad. So I, I basically was doing everything possible. So I would, whether it be bandit signs, business cards, I'd done some mailings. Uh, in fact, that's a whole nother story. I bought three houses off of one of my mailings of that year. I'd, I'd done all these different things uh, to get sellers calling me and to call sellers. And you heard me talk about a previous video, Field Agent on Steroids, which was a huge part of this. 50 houses in 52 weeks. So being creative and things are always changing. There's been, I went months at a time where I bought most of the houses off of uh, Google ads. I went months at a time where I bought most of the houses off of uh, Facebook ads and bandit signs. I went months of time where I bought most of the deals from realtors bringing me uh, cheap cash deals. So all these different types of strategies that you can implement. The more you know, the more you can implement. The more tools you have in your tool belt, the more deals you're able to make. So be creative and make sure you have the right person in your corner, the right mentor, the right training to be able to take uh, each opportunity, assess it for what it is, whack the ones that don't work fast and the ones that do work end up taking ownership of them if you choose or controlling them in some form and making money off of them. This video, all about being creative. If you like this, click the subscribe button and uh, the like button below and uh, give us a thumbs up. I'll see you on the next video.